Hello, Gates Trialli community. My name is Christopher Daly, and I am the superintendent of the Gates Trialli Central School District. Thank you all for joining us for our third live virtual forum. As we wait for more viewers to join the live video, I want to introduce several members of our administration, all of whom have served on our reopening task force. We have Associate Superintendent for Instruction, Mrs. Carol Stem, Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources and Labor Relations, Ms. Michaela Parado, Director of Physical Education, Health and Athletics, and our district's COVID-19 coordinator, Dr. Patrick Irving. Director of People Personnel Services, Mr. Jason Jones. Director of Facilities, George English. And Director of Transportation, Matt Hembel. We also would like to welcome an addition to our group tonight, Leah. Our sign language interpreter will be here for the duration of our video to ensure our deaf and hard of hearing families can participate. As I mentioned in our previous two forums, this group is just one small subset of our larger reopening task force that has been meeting since mid-June to plan for the reopening of our school building this fall. The format for this evening will be as follows. We'll spend a few minutes addressing the items that we received most questions about. Once we're done addressing each of these areas, if you still have additional questions, please submit them using the live chat function to the right of the video. Please be mindful of asking questions that have already been asked and answered. We will do our best to answer as many questions as possible within this allotted time. All other questions will be added to the FAQ section of the district website within three business days. I want to start by sharing some information for our UPK families. On Friday afternoon, we received notice from New York State of an anticipated reduction in state aid of 20%. Since then, we've been working on determining what this will mean for our UPK program. The district will be reaching out to our UPK families directly in the next 48 hours to talk more about student placement within our program. Now with staffing and instruction. You may remember I shared the results of our enrollment survey during our last two forums. We received 3,431 responses at that time. Approximately 1,000 of our total enrollment opted for remote, which is about 27% of total in-district learners. I've also shared since the enrollment form closed, we've had a large influx of families contact us to change their instructional model. The number of students in the remote model has decreased to a little more than 900. A question last time asked was, for how many per grade did we have remote learners? Most grades, K through 12, are in the 45 to 60 range per grade. A few, though, do have significantly more. Taking this into consideration, we are having to adjust our plans for the hybrid assignments. We have begun staffing based on the registration requests. You'll be hearing more from each school shortly. Once we complete the staffing, we still have to create schedules and assignments. We understand your frustration that comes with not having all the answers right away today. However, it's important that we do this right the first time to eliminate any possible confusion or uncertainty when students begin arriving on September 14th. Again, a reminder that staffing usually occurs in February and March, and we are trying to do this now over a short three to five day period. Scheduling occurs over a four-month period, and we're trying to do that within a 10-day turnaround. And our routing for our buses and transportation takes two months, and we are accomplishing this in two weeks. Another reminder is that first day for students has been updated to September 14th to allow for us to continue to provide outstanding professional development to our staff in health and safety, culturally responsive education, technology, and social-emotional learning. With health and safety, we received an update from the Monroe County Health Department. We were informed that gaiters this week, or neck coverings that you can pull up to cover your face, and flannel-made masks are no longer approved as official face coverings. 
Now, we will begin the live question and answer portion. Please give us a moment to pull up the questions. First question, my child has severe food and eating anxiety. How will the schools be proactive to normalize the social and positive aspect of cafeteria eating under the restrictions? We will work with your child, the teacher, and our cafeteria staff to normalize it as much as possible and make it a warm, safe environment for them while in school. How do we log on for the first day of school? That information will be coming uh, to each household, depending on whether you are remote or hybrid. And we'll have all that information based on grade and teacher uh, before the end of the month. If we social distance in the classroom, why do we have to keep the mask on during instruction? Isn't that the point of being spread apart? We are requiring all students to wear masks. There will be mask breaks. And we are, at this time, are requiring that all day long in order to provide a safe environment for all. Will computers be provided for all grades K through 12? Yes, students will be, if they don't have their own, will be provided a, a district computer. Uh, and we are working on how we roll that out for the different buildings and grades in grades K through 12. My child is attending hybrid in person on Tuesday and Friday. What are students such as mine expected to do on the first day of school given that the first day is a Thursday? On the first day for the 14th, that Monday and Thursday is your, your child uh, is the is in person on Tuesday and Friday. Monday and Thursday is tentative that we will be able to uh, have them log in and meet with their teacher virtually. Uh, so we'll be working on that, and more information will be coming on that shortly, so that your child does have a first day of, of instruction. It will be virtually. As remote learnings increase, what what number will open full days for in person? Uh, right now, we are not able to bring all students back safely and within the parameters that New York State has set. So we are not able to bring all students back full day in person at this time. What are the school starting times for middle and high school? We will be releasing those next week as we finalize schedules this week as far as start times and end times along the transportation. What was the reasoning behind splitting grade levels at the high school level, grouping by last name? Grade levels at high school uh, We have looked at, we have to split, split them up so that half can be in attendance one day in order to make sure that we don't have the classes overcrowded and not meeting the social distancing requirements from New York State and A through L and M through Z. Uh, there are some variations of that based on building and families. So if your name does not fall into that and they are reaching out individually, because we do have some families that have students with various last names. So we are reaching out to them individually to work that out. Um, and again, it's we have to split the students in half and it was across the district roughly even, but not in each building. Will there be a dress code for masks? There will be a requirement, uh, the dress code will apply to masks uh, as in our code of conduct and character. And so yes, students will not be able to have uh, masks that promote drugs, alcohol, things such as that. Uh, similar to the, the dress code used for other clothing materials. Uh, let's see, if we choose not to have our child tested, will they be allowed back after 14 days home from school? They will have to follow all protocols established by the Monroe County Health Department, and currently that is that they have to be tested uh, in order to return. Uh, so at this time, the answer would be no, they would not be allowed to return until that has been done. Now, the protocols could change for Monroe County between now and the 14th, but at this time, that is what we have to follow. When will we be able to have a CSE? I'll turn that over to Mr. DeJohn. We will be able to have CSE meetings starting at the beginning of the school year. Uh, much like in the spring, though, they will be held via Zoom. Thank you. Is the first day of school still Monday, 9-14? Yes, it is. 
Can you explain the mass breaks, how long and how many per day? Uh, we are currently working out how that will be based on grade level and students. And we'll have more information on that for you uh, prior to the start of school. Please have patience as we are working through all these details uh, and what is allowed. Uh, and we're getting guidance from the county and state health department as to what is, what is needed and required. So we are adjusting on the fly, uh, but it's all being looked into. And again, we'll, you'll have it well before September 14th so that you're able to understand what is expected. In the spring, I experienced many challenges with the high school teachers posting information assignments in several different places. Will there be more consistency in where teachers are posting assignments? Yes, we heard you loud and clear. Uh, Schoology is the platform that will be used that you'll be able to access for your students to find where those assignments are. And yes, parents will have access to that. What will at-home learning look for, like for the hybrid model? Live instruction or work posted to be completed? Actually, it'll be both. Depending on the subject and grade level, it could vary uh, depending on what they're doing that week within the class. So there will be live instruction where they'll be looking into the classroom that day. There'll be breakout sessions using our Microsoft 365 Teams app where it allows them to work with peers, whether you're in person or at home. And there may be watching uh, different clips uh, then reacting to them in another manner that be turned in. So it will be a combination of both for hybrid learners. Across the country, as schools have opened, there has been an increase of kids getting COVID-19. How will the district handle it if such an event happens? We will work with Monroe County Health Department and react if this does happen in the appropriate manner uh, and follow all the directives to, to react to it. Again, with New York right now, we are in a, a, a solid place. And that is another reason when you ask this question, why we are mandating masks, why we have updated our cleaning protocols, why we have uh, our students will be trained in how to put their masks on, keep them on, how to wash hands, social distancing, etc. Uh, we are doing everything we can to provide the safest environment possible. Will there be an orientation for in-district sixth graders? There is one on the calendar for those new to the district, but not in-district students. Uh, the middle school will be sending out information on that shortly, and as well as the high school at, for these transitions, and they will get to you directly in regards to that. And that could be a question you can call in your school's counselor as well. How will students know what groups they will be in if they take the hybrid classes? The teachers will work with them to understand that as they break out into different groups. It's a, it, it's a neat aspect of the program that allows them to, uh, the teacher to assign those groups so the students can work collaboratively. What does gym and phys ed look like under the restrictions? Is a mask required during gym and how will gym look for online students? Dr. Irving. So physical education uh, will obviously be remote and in person this year uh, based on uh, selections, but um, we will be following the same themes we typically do in our elementary, middle, and high school PE curriculum. However, we're gonna be maximizing our opportunities where we're going outside uh, and increasing our social distancing um, and then providing additional mass breaks while doing so. But our themes and our activities will, will still fall aligned and be similar, uh, we will, all, but we will be eliminating uh, students using the same um, equipment uh, to prevent um, any spread. Thank you. Will face shields be accepted as face coverings? No, uh, they can be in addition to a face covering, but they do not replace a face covering according to the health Will students change classes throughout the day? And if so, how is social distancing being upheld? We'll be working with students to stay six feet apart as they transition between classes. Uh, there's signage throughout the building. There are also arrows and, and reminders on the floor and teachers will be monitoring this and teaching the behavior. If someone tests positive for COVID-19 at school, will everyone have to quarantine? No. However, we will follow the directive and working with the Monroe County Health Department 
as to what that would look like. It could be dependent on uh, who that student's come into contact with, and we'll be working with contact tracing with the Monroe County Health Department to determine who would maybe have to quarantine, who may have to wait a couple days. It all depends on the guidance from our health department that we've been working hand in hand with from the beginning. Do students choose the choose hybrid need to have a COVID test before starting school? No, they do not. It is not required. Uh, we'll be using an app that each family will have to attest to each morning that their child is coming to school uh, symptom free, as well as our staff. And so, no, we are not we are not requiring a COVID test prior to starting school. Have air filtering systems been updated or added to all classrooms, Mr. English? So all all of our air filters have been changed out uh, and are, will be brand new for students returning. Uh, and from my uh, air filtering and ventilation standpoint. SED requires that we turn the air over in a classroom or any space where students are at least four times an hour. Um, all of our classrooms meet that requirement and exceed it. Most of them are five per hour. Uh, many are even as much as six per hour. Thank you, sir. How are the kids learning from home going to get instruction? Zoom means the kids in school or, or is it pre-recorded? Uh, the, if they are completely remote, uh, they'll have a teacher assigned to them that will be working on them with a combination of all of that. Will parents have training on how to use, navigate Schoology Microsoft Teams? Yes, we are working on some clips that parents can use to learn how to uh, navigate Schoology and Microsoft. Students are normally expected to have current physical and dental when school starts. Well, that expectation is still upheld for remote learning. Yes, all our students, uh, again, New York State has waived these for a year based on uh, COVID-19. Uh, so uh, they are not required to have it updated right now based on that waiver for the year. So both for in and out of school. This is an excellent community forum opportunity. Thank you. Have or would building principals consider posting parent forums similar to this before September 14th and perhaps quarterly. We are uh, talking about doing that, yes. To clarify, UPK availability is still up in the air. Should families start looking for alternative options given that there are three and a half weeks until the school year starts? We'll be in touch with all UPK families uh, before this weekend in regards to this. Will students be still be changing in the middle school and high school for PE? No. Will things return to normal at some point in the school year? I sure hope so. Uh, but again, it's it's based on the guidance and where we are as a district, as a city, as a state. Uh, and again, uh, our goal from the beginning is to have all our students back, but we are living in a pandemic and we will follow the guidance to keep us as safe as possible. And my, my hopes are that we'll be able to get a handle on this as a nation so that we are able to bring our students back full time. Uh, we just, we can't do that right now in the middle of this pandemic. Do all the kids eat lunch in their classrooms? No, uh, depending on the age group and depending on uh, the situation in each school, remember we have two schools under construction. Some may be able to have some time where they do get to eat in the, in the, in the cafeterias at our younger grades. And at the high school and middle school, it will be a combination of the cafeteria and other areas in order to socially distance the students. Will there be traditional homework on days students are in person? There will be, yes, there will be homework. How will parents communicate there is no temperature symptoms daily? Well, we are having an app that we are purchased that uh, before the, hopefully by the end of the month, the latest September 1st, we're hope to have to you uh, with training and how to use it, that people will be able to communicate with the district. Uh, it'll be required every day uh, prior to their students attending school. So yes, there will be an app forthcoming. When changing classes, how classroom desks and doors be sanitized? We'll be sanitizing throughout the day on door handles and high contact areas. And within the rooms, we'll uh, have uh, cleaning materials available. 
What happens if you have COVID-19 symptoms while at school? So if a student suddenly, or a staff member suddenly develops symptoms while at school, they would be brought to the building nurse. We have a room where for isolation where that person would go in. If the nurse with her his or her professional assessment believes that these fall into COVID-19 systems or symptoms, they would be uh, sent home and they would be, need to check with their personal physician or pediatric uh, physician uh, in order to remedy and see what goes on. And if their pediatric physician or physician requires them to have a COVID-19 test, then uh, from there, yeah, our, our cycle will begin. Are families allowed to monitor the entire school day when their child is home on their virtual day? If that means watch their children on the when they are virtually using the computers, yes. Will there be extra help available with homework? Will the library be open? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Wednesdays will be days to have office hours so that students are able to ask for help with homework. Uh, built within the day, uh, students will be able to contact their teachers uh, and through email as well. Uh, so yes, there will be opportunities to get help with homework. Will the library be open? Uh, the library will be open, but it's going to be different. And we're working through that right now. Uh, we obviously can't have people going through and touching everything and, uh, and then having to clean everything all over. So we're working through that currently. Will we still have classrooms with students with IEPs and students without? How will that work with some going four days a week, some going two days a week at the elementary level? Yes, there will be some uh, classes with that. Here, here, please. Sure. Sure. So we will have classrooms with uh, students with disabilities who will be attending four days a week along with their general education peers uh, who will be there two days a week. So there'll be two different groups of gen ed peers that they'll be seeing. Um, on the, each of those two days. Uh, that will allow for our students with disabilities to be able to work in small groups and be provided uh, intentional and explicit instruction during the days that they're there. Thank you. Are there lunches provided on remote days and how are these collected? Yes, we will be coming out with how students will be able to pick up lunches if they were on remote <coughs> and the schedule for that. Will free school lunches continue in the spring? As of now, the federal government is not doing that. So it will go back to previous where you would have, if you, you would have to purchase lunch uh, unless you are free or reduced. How will we determine when school can fully resume in person? <coughs> Good question. We will be directed by our government and health department when we they are able to loosen restrictions that allows us to open fully in person. Uh, we do not know uh, when that will be. The best way to get there, though, is to, pass, to wear a mask, wash your hands, socially distance. Will students that are remote learning have daily meetings with teachers? They will have four out of five days definite day, uh, contact with teachers. Uh, it, it'll look differently based on grade levels. <coughs> Will all students have access to the email accounts? Uh, secondary level, yes. We're working through that with the elementary. What can parents do to help get themselves and children ready for school? Practice masking, having good sleep habits, and again, getting excited to get involved in the education process again. Will the students be allowed to have water bottles in class? Yes. We are changing all fountains out to be bottle dispensers. We'll be providing a water bottle for each student. We're also asking this for each student to bring their own. <coughs> On the chance we have a snow day, will it turn into a remote learning day as is done in some other districts? Yes, that's what we're, our plan is at this point. Let's see. How many students will be per school? Well, think about it on an average day, it'll be half of what they usually have. Because half the classes will be there. Typical class will be between 10 and 12 students in some of our bigger rooms at the secondary level that can hold up to 
30 to 35 students, you may have upwards of 12 to 15 socially distanced. Will there be regents and SATs? Great question. Uh, we anticipate them, but we do not know at this point. What does, and that's up to New York State Education Department and the National Testing Service, not us. What does remote learning day look like in the hybrid model for elementary and middle school? Well, elementary, uh, it, you're gonna see different things based on the teacher and grade level. Uh, there'll be some work together, some independent work and getting back together. And then at the middle school, they'll be following their, their period day. So they'll be checking in with different teachers throughout the day. So it'll be different between the two. Can parents cha change, can you go, thank you. Can parents change the form of learning if the ones they have chosen does not work well for the children? We will be uh, assessing that as we go on. We can't commit that everyone's gonna be able to change. It's gonna be based on what we can fit in if it's going from remote to hybrid, whether we have room uh, to safely bring students in. And also because we're, st we're still staffing with the high number of people that have asked for remote is staffing that to make sure that we are uh, have room for them in the remote model as well as we are staffing that. So the, I guess the, the answer would be maybe, but I cannot guarantee one way or the other at this time. Wouldn't the risk be lower if students remain in the same classroom for learning throughout the day rather than change classes, engaging with different students throughout the day? The less people you come into contact with, yes, it's, it's, it's a safer environment. Is there a possibility that some elementary students in hybrid get shifted to a different building due to physical spacing availability? At this point, no, but could that be a possibility? Yes. Remember that two of our buildings are under construction. What about bathroom breaks? So based on the age level, those will look different. Uh, there are restrictions on how many can be in a a bathroom that has multi stalls at a time that we will be educating the students about and depending on the grade level uh, how that is done. So again, secondary will look significantly different than an elementary. Is there going to be gym class? Dr. Irving? Yes, we'll definitely still have physical education. It's mandated by, by New York State and it will uh, both be in person and remote. Thank you. If our child is attending an out-of-district private school and is riding your bus, how will his symptoms or tests be recorded before he gets on the bus? Uh, students in that instance will have to have both our app and, for example, that question was asked last week, uh, if the, and the student was going to Aquinas, I believe. Uh, I believe Aquinas is doing the same thing, so they would have to answer both. When will we be getting supply lists and info for orientation such as K and sixth graders? Shortly, uh, ideally next week. Again, uh, we are working through staffing and starting and getting our schedules done. They will be coming. Remember that we are starting a week later this year, uh, starting with the 14th. So we are working diligently and we'll get that out to you as soon as we can. How will gym class work in the winter when it's too cold to go outside? So we've figured out how many students we can have in all of our uh, PE learning areas, including our gymnasiums and cafeteria and classrooms where push-in might, uh, might be necessary. But even before uh, the pandemic, we were still going outside uh, for different units such as snowshoeing and cross-country skiing. So we're definitely going to still explore those opportunities uh, for our students during the winter. Will the kids be able to have field trips? We will be doing virtual field trips this year, uh, not and not going anywhere outside the district at this point. Will it be musical education, choir, et cetera? Yes, but with, it will be different based on the restrictions that are put on our uh, music instruments and, and singing. Uh, we are adjusting to that to still provide music education because we know how important that is for our students. 
Will schools be closing for holidays, conference days? Will this adversely affect the group of five students that will lose an in-person day? We are working to balance that uh, as, as we speak. Again, uh, trying to make sure that people don't lose any days and that it balances out. What percentage of GCCSD students chose 100% remote? Uh, earlier we shared it was 27%, and then we had uh, 60 stu 61 students, I'm sorry, uh, that parents shared that they would be doing homeschool. If a child has a common cold ear infection, will they be able to return to school or will they be forced to quarantine or have a COVID test? Again, they, with, with the app that you'll be answering, uh, this would be based, you would be using uh, common sense with this. Uh, this is not a COVID related, this is a common cold. And with a physician's note and following the proper procedures, student would not be required to quarantine or have a COVID test. Uh, and again, that's what working with our school nurses to discuss what's going on so they know. For example, I am an asthmatic and I may show a breathing issue that is not related to COVID, but it's because I have asthma. And it's knowing our students that allows us to make, our, our professional nurses to make the decision on recommendations. Was the concern of students remaining in the same class considered and have the teacher change classes being as, as the high risk, as high returns of students? Uh, we are doing that at grade levels where it's appropriate. Obviously at the secondary level and the intricacies of, of middle school and high school schedule it's not possible. We're trying to limit transitions uh, with spaces, uh, with, with, with spacing as much as possible to limit that. What are the sports seasons looking like? Great question. Uh, the, uh, Governor Cuomo told us today, he'll let us know next week. Uh, I, right now, uh, the proposal is to start September 21st for the fall, the shortened season. However, we don't know what he will say next week. Many states have, have uh, tried to open and have closed. Many states have started and are still going, and some have canceled altogether. So we should know next week what that expectation is. And as shared on a previous one of these meetings, the uh, state is also a proposal that we would do a season that would start in January with winter sports, and then you'd have your fall season next, and then end the school year with spring season. But we should know more about that next week as far as what we're allowed to do. Would I list some of the state mandates that have been waived? Uh, the, waive the waivers are for a new physical to come back to school. And uh, is, is the one that comes to the top of my head. Uh, some other mandates are uh, the, with teaching that we're allowed to have teachers teach uh, outside of their certification. Um, some other mandates are now that we have to have, have masks. Uh, that has not been waived, that's been added actually. Uh, so those are a couple that have come on. Uh, is it a full day of school for hybrid and remote? Uh, it's, yes, it's going to be a day. It, there will be, just like in school, there'll be times of doing independent work There'll be times that they're back with their class. There'll be times that they are uh, working with groups. So yes, it'll be similar. It's not going to be every bell kind of deal, but it will be uh, different than it was in the spring, to say the least. If a remote learning student has remote classes, will there be transportation? Yes. How we maintain social distance on a bus? Students will be required to wear masks. And we have limited the amount of students that can be on a bus in order to meet the mandate. What is the turnaround for IT requests for students? My scholar put in a ticket a few days ago and has not heard back. Well, I will check with our IT department uh, what that is and we'll be able to put that up on our FAQ. How will sports work? Will students be able to go to different schools like before for games? Mr. Irving, or Dr. Irving. So, um, as our superintendent said, we're still waiting on guidelines from uh, Albany on if and when sports will return and what that will look like. But we, as a league, we still have our schedules in place. Uh, we will prioritize our league and divisional matchups. Um, and then, if allowed, we would uh, be able to go outside of the county. But we will prioritize our, 
our league and divisional matchups for our schedules for upcoming season. Okay, how are you going to handle the kids interacting and playing with each other? We're going to have to work with students, especially at our youngest level, to understand uh, what the appropriate boundaries are and, and social distancing while utilizing uh, playtime. And it'll be an educational process that our outstanding teachers will work with the students and their families to understand. Will there be access to career counseling and college prep? Yes, there will be. But at our high school, absolutely. The elementary level would have dedicated would have dedicated teachers. The teacher that teaches in person on Monday does not teach a different person class Tuesday, but would be online with the Monday kids. Uh, at the elementary level, uh, you'll have a combo of that that the some kids will be coming in, uh, and we'll have a dedicated. Uh, if you're talking about everybody being in the hybrid model. Half the kids are there in person, half are at home. Uh, we'll be working on having that combined so that they have both experiences. How do you send the health information to the nurse before school starts? Uh, I will have to update that with the, you know, if you're talking about our app, the app would start on the 14th. If you're talking about an updated health information that your child may have, uh, something new that needs to be shared with the school, uh, we will get that information out to you with registration pack or with packets that come for getting started with school. How will students who attend Momoko affected by all this? I also having half size classes. It, with the amount of students that are taking it, uh, they are able to still be socially distanced while wearing masks and be able to do their classes at Momoko. Uh, they've worked that out so that they're able to do that based on the spacing of the classrooms they have there. Does each school have a full-time nurse? Yes. Is the hub open for tutoring? Uh, not like traditionally, uh, but the high school will be sharing more about that as we get closer to opening. What will course look like specifically for remote-only learners in the middle school? Great question. We will have to get back to you with our FAQ on that. If secondary students are not using lockers, there will be a place they can store coats during the school day. Coats will go through with them to start. And then as it gets colder, we will assess how we are going to be using lockers later on. But at the beginning of the year, we are not anticipating uh, very, very cold weather that would require the heavier jackets. Lighter jackets will go around with them during the day at this point, or be able to be put inside their backpacks. Are all kids at IP uh, attending four days a week? They are, unless they've chosen remote learning. Can students with disabilities opt to attend only two days instead of four days? Uh, we have not had that request directly yet, that I know of. No, and Obviously, our intent is to have our students with disabilities attend all four days, um, but we'll work with families on an individual basis uh, to determine what is in the best interest of students. Will athletes be required to ride the bus to and from sporting events? We are adjusting that if we do have uh, athletics. So that's a great question that we'll be better able to answer if we do. For in-person classes, will all the assignments be on the computer or on paper? We are trying to put as much on the computer as possible to allow students to have access to it, whether they are in person or at home. Will there be any after school at the high school level? No, not at this time. Secondary students who have hybrid instruction difficulty affect computer or by not grasping the academic task won't have hands-on support to help them on those tasks. What is the protocol for that? Uh, it'll be working with the teacher uh, to follow up with different ways to get that material understood and mastered. And so there's going to be office hours established by each teacher where kids can get uh, individual help as well. Approximately when will assessments benchmarks be taken and how frequently will progress monitoring occur throughout the fall? This is STEM.
So it depends on the grade level at which they are at. At the elementary level, we'll be looking at taking um, our diagnostic assessment in the fall uh, in after the first couple of weeks of school for ELA and math, our iReady assessments that we've been using for a couple of years. At the secondary level, it depends on the course and um, it depends on where is that assessment going to be pro appropriate for them to take. So we're working through um, all of those pieces right now in regards to the timelines and the pacing for assessments and benchmarks. Thank you. Would there be any classes that remote learners would be ineligible to take because they're solely remote learners? It depends on the grade level. There may be some at the secondary, primary, the high school with electives that may not be able to be done solely remote, but those families will be contacted directly as the schedule comes together. Will there be an extra mask available for students if the need arises in the day or on the bus? Absolutely. We'll have masks on buses. We'll have masks in the buildings for students that need an extra one uh, throughout the day and throughout their attendance. Are students in the middle school supposed to bring school supplies in the first day of school hybrid learning? Students will, and families will have this communication from the individual schools and grade levels shortly that will explain the expectations for each building, including the middle school. We got 19 minutes left. Great question. If students keep book bags and jackets with them during the day, will there be different security policies or procedures? Yes. Last night at our board meeting, we adopted uh, the updated uh, code of conduct that allows for students to have book bags and jackets on them during the day due to COVID-19 and the pandemic. Uh, so yes, we've adjusted that and in each building they'll be communicating that with students returning. Uh, again, because we're not using lockers at the secondary level, they'll have to have a way of transporting their supplies, their textbook, their computer. So we, are, we have changed those policies, yes. And again, thank you to all the families who have been asking questions. Uh, it allows us to get more information out to help people uh, prepare for a rather unique uh, fall opening. Are the masks in elementary child size? Yes, we have ordered masks uh, that should fit every child. We have smaller ones for that are reusable, uh, are adjustable. Uh, also, we have temporary ones or the ones you can get and wear once and throw away that are in, in multiple sizes as well uh, throughout the district. Uh, we have been preparing for this uh, since the spring and ordering PPE that is age appropriate. What is the protocol to cleaning the rooms while the kids commute from one class to another? Uh, Mr. English? We'll be focusing on high touch points during uh, transition times. We will have wipes uh, that are disinfecting wipes in the classrooms that can be used. We've also purchased electrostatic sprayers that uh, we can spray a, a disinfectant that has a three minute kill claim uh, for COVID. And so in that transition time, we'll be using that when we can as well. Thank you, sir. Will all high school electives classes be offered as in previous years? We are currently working through that, uh, especially with staffing to see what, how this will be impacted. Uh, students that have been told previously they have all their classes set, we'll contact any directly that it changes for them. How will lunch be like in the middle school to keep social distance in the guidelines? As, as shared previously, we are going to be utilizing not just the cafeteria, but other spaces near there to allow for students to have spacing. We've also ordered dividers to have a physical barrier for them uh, as they take their masks off to eat. So yes, it will look differently. 
My soon-to-be ninth grader is wondering how she'll be able to customize her schedule with a remote learning model. Will she receive information on how to build her schedule in the coming days? Uh, her schedule will be shared with her uh, soon, uh, again, as we work through these over the next 10 days. Is there going to be some way for the kids to socialize with their friends? What are you going to do if kids are bullying other kids? Uh, with Depending on the grade level uh, and interaction, uh, there will be opportunities with social distancing to interact with friends. Uh, we will handle bullying like we have in previous years uh, with the code of conduct uh, inappropriateness. How many in-class days will MoCo students have? Will second year students get hands-on work that was lost prior school year due to COVID? Uh, they will be in session uh, four days a week and their second year students get hands-on work. Uh, they are working on how they're compensating for students that lost it last spring. When will we hear about laptop pickup and what's your suggestion to help keep parents up to date as things may change? We will continue like we did in the spring, producing uh, videos to share with families as things change to keep people updated. We will use our social media as well as our robocalls and our website to update families on a regular basis. Uh, and when will you get be able to pick up devices? We're looking to do that uh, the first week and second week of September uh, prior to the 14th so that parents will and students will have their uh, laptops. How long will each period be for the high school students? Right now we're looking at 40 minute periods. Will parents be notified closer to the opening of how many students will be in each class? Uh, yes. Will the kids being used, kids be using Chromebooks? No. We have laptops. We use Microsoft. Yes, we, we, did, we already were a one-to-one -one district, so we were not reliant upon uh, new devices coming in. Our, ours have arrived that we did order earlier, so we're all set. So it is our kind of response we wipe down the chairs before they start each class, or will staff be doing this? It'll be a combination of both. Remembering that at the secondary level that there used to be 30 desks in, in the classroom, they may be alternating rows and then when there's time available to wipe down, some students will choose to wipe down, some won't, and staff will do the same. How is staffing going? Are we missing out a lot of staff? We're not missing anybody, uh, but we are trying to accommodate those that have medical needs and are working through that. Uh, the, and again, our outstanding staff has been great to work with on this and problem solve as we try and figure out this new environment together. Can you put that down, please? I can't see that one. Can juniors who opt to attend Wilmoco change their mind due to the changes at hand and instead opt out? Please contact your high school counselor to discuss that with them. I work every other Monday and Tuesday and every other Thursday and Friday. Is it possible for those my daughter can learn remotely when I don't have work, I can take her to school? Please reach out to your school to discuss this. Will there be a gap before and after school through Gates Charlie Rec or Charlie Rec in the elementary schools? Uh, we are working with both those uh, rec departments to have this happen. It won't be in every school, but yes, we are working to have Gates Rec and Charlie Rec offer gap at the elementary level. If my secondary level student wants to change your decision about learning choice, choice done survey, will that be accommodated? Uh, at, at this point, we are, are asking that we ask for a commitment through the fall. We're trying to get that going as far as schedules. And so we're trying to limit people changing at this point so that we can actually get everybody scheduled for either remote or hybrid. Uh, so at this time, you, you can seek a request. I can't guarantee it will happen. As we are, again, everyone wants us to have a schedule ready. If people keep changing back and forth, it will be very hard to provide schedules in an efficient manner quickly. Uh, what is the expectation to have more than one child in the elementary level? Will remote learning times be altered to allow for assistance with each child? Uh, we are working through that at this time. Are we allowed to make a request to switch to the assigned hybrid days for our high school and middle school students? Right now we have balanced and you would you need to, to seek that out with each building 
but at this point we're trying to schedule and shifting students back and forth could lead to the fact that we can't uh, staff appropriately. So you would need to contact the school. But we are asking parents to not do that uh, as we try, as people are expecting us to have schedules ready for them. Uh, and we're trying to get that done. And if things keep switching back and forth, it further delays us from getting there. Is there a per school maximum of COVID cases that would cause a shutdown? Uh, I have not been told what the maximum is by the County Health Department, but that would be their, deci their decision to tell us this is when you're the difference between shutting down a classroom, hallway, building, district. Uh, we would be following their guidance and mandates. How is attendance taken with remote learning? Uh, it will be when the students log in uh, to work with the teacher or log into Schoology to work on an assignment that allows us to take attendance. All the district support families without internet access. Uh, please contact the, we had some families that indicated that. We'll be working with them to help with internet access and providing that. And so we'll be reaching out to those families that indicated they needed that help shortly. You said that we are good on staffing. Were there any new diversity hires? Well, we are in the middle of the hiring process and we've had, we, yes, we have hired some with diverse, uh, some diverse uh, people in all units across the district. What about the laptop insurance? Will we pay that at pickup as before? There'll be information in regards to this shortly uh, for you to, un to be able to see. Uh, it won't be the same as before, uh, but I think you'll be very pleased when we finalize that document. Is the possibility of being able to pick up worksheets for elementary students been looked at yet to slow down the need for home printing? This is STEM. One of the things that we are asking our teachers to do is when those kids are in school to consider um, sending home with them the materials that they will need. So if there are certain worksheets that they need to do um, when they're doing their at-home days, that those worksheets will be sent home with them. Thank you. When will high school students get their supply lists? We have to schedule first so then they know what classes they have to get their supply lists. So hopefully within the next five to seven days, we should be able to do that. Uh, but again, we are working through it right now and hopefully we'll have those lists shortly for you. But it all depends on how scheduling goes. I made a request to switch to hybrid learning days for my high school and middle school students early last week so that my husband was able to provide transportation. I haven't heard back. Please be patient and bear with us. Uh, I would contact the school again to see what the status is um, and they'll be able to answer that for you. What will school drop off and pickup times look like? We are working through that uh, with our security staff and transportation, as we know there will be more people dropping off students than before. Uh, and we thank, for, thank the families for partnering with us, as well as how transportation itself will look different. We'll have more information on that uh, by the end of the month. Students not going into school or remote be given packets to work on, especially at the elementary level. The, it depends on the teacher and grade level uh, that they will be determining that. Does 100% online mean self-guided instruction or is there some virtual contact with teachers for online learners? Yes, there will be virtual contact with teachers for online learners. It will not be all self-guided. We would be addressing the emotional toll of the situation of the kids as a whole. Absolutely. We sent out a survey for families to answer in regards to the emotional toll so that we could be prepared for our students and our staff coming back and how that we can best help them. Will students be doing traditional science lab activities at the secondary level? Yes. Within safety protocols established. We have five minutes remaining, of course.
And again, thank you so much for participating in this and sending us questions. Uh, we are updating our FAQ as, as quickly as we can as more questions come in. And we thank you for your patience. Um, as we adapt and evolve uh, as this goes on. We are preparing the best we can uh, for a safe and fun beginning of the school year. Our staff is working very hard to adapt to this new environment so that our students can have a very positive start to the school year. How does a student obtain a parking permit to drive themselves to school and is there a deadline? Please reach out to the high school tomorrow and they can help you with that. We are working, a uh, question was, will each individual school have one of these forms where we can ask specific questions? We're working towards that. Hybrid students only expect to complete the COVID questionnaire on days that they come into school. No, all students that will be entering school, meaning that the hybrid students, whether they're at school or at home, will have to answer those questions each day. Do we have to pay for insurance for the elementary laptops? We will have more information on that shortly. Uh, we're currently solving that issue. Will drivers that be offered? That's a great question. I'll have to hadn't thought of that one yet. Uh, we'll be checking to see how we could do that safely. I'm not anticipating it at this point, at least a car portion. We would be able to do the classroom, but let me check on that and we'll update that in our FAQ. Will remote learners have an opportunity to meet the teachers in person? Virtually, yes. In person, no. Will students get tested for COVID at school? We are not equipped to test for COVID at school. Uh, unless the state changes how that's done, no, we will not be testing for COVID at school. So thank you again to all our families who've been asking questions. We'll continue to communicate with our families in the coming weeks ahead of the first day of school on Monday, September 14th. Please continue to check back with our frequently asked questions section of our website. There's a link on the district homepage under Spotlight News. Thank you all for your continued patience and support. We will get through this by working together. Go Spartans.